Hey fellas, welcome to a new tutorial from Connie's Arts. My name is Seanak Patwardhan and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create ink drops in After Effects. These can even pass as watercolor drops or whatever. Any colored liquid on a piece of paper would fit the description pretty well. I'll show you how to create one of these and you can play with the settings to change the way they look. The first thing I'd like to mention to you is that you need a textured paper in the background. So I'm going to use a generic canvas paper background for this tutorial. You can use any background you need but if it has a texture on it, it'll look better since we will be adding blend modes to the ink drops later in the tutorial. So let's get started. Alright, so once you're in After Effects, go to Composition, New Composition, and let's change this to 2000 by 2000 Composition. 30 FPS is good. And let's rename this to Drop Shape Composition. Alright, press OK. And let's create a new solid, go to Layer and uh, create a new solid or you can just press ctrl or command y on your keyboard like it shows here i generally prefer the keyboard shortcut since it's just faster and easier okay so i'm gonna create a mask on this uh, a circular mask but instead of actually going here and drawing a circle if you don't have the ellipse tool you can just uh, click and hold on this tool and it'll show you all the shape tools here and you can go to ellipse but as I said instead of creating a circle like this and not having it being centered and everything I'm gonna double click on this ellipse tool which creates a centered circle which kind of extends to the boundaries of this composition and since this composition is a square we get a perfect circle here I'm gonna double click on this circle and I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and I'm going to toggle this transparency option so that we see what's going on. All right. Now I'm going to animate a couple of these properties on this mask. So if you press M twice on your keyboard, M for mask, if you press it twice on your keyboard, you will reveal all the masks and the properties of those masks on, on your layer. Currently, we have only one mask on this layer. So let's start animating it. I'm gonna uh, go to the first frame and add a keyframe to the mask path and the mask feather. And I'm gonna go like three seconds and maybe seven frames on the timeline. And I'm gonna add another set of keyframes here. But let's go to the first keyframe and double click on the mask and scale it down scale it down so much that it's basically non-existent here okay so we have an animated mask here and for the second set of keyframes I'm gonna change the mask feather to 284 pixels also just to make sure that uh, the layer is not visible at all at the beginning of this animation I'm also going to animate the scale property of this layer if you press s on your keyboard It'll show the scale of this layer. Let's add a keyframe at the very beginning of the timeline. And maybe go a few frames forward and let's add another keyframe. And for the first keyframe, let's change the scale to zero. Now, if you press Q on your keyboard, you will reveal all the keyframe properties of your layer. And if you select all of them and press the F9 key on your keyboard, you change the interpolation of these uh, of these of these keyframes from linear to easy ease so the animation starts slower it changes speed and ends slower in the middle it's a little bit faster so we get a little bit of an easy ease effect and to amplify it so basically when a drop happens when this ink drop kind of thing happens uh, it generally is very fast at the beginning and it kind of slows down at the end so select these two keyframes and go to your graph editor and I'm gonna change these I'm gonna uh, move these handles of the end frame to the very beginning of this 
by the way this is a value graph if you want you can even edit the speed graph it basically does the same thing so I prefer to use the value graph whenever it's available so that's just a tip that you might want to keep in mind and I'm gonna do the same thing with the scale layer as well I'm gonna change this to the very beginning all right now there now the basic part is done let's add some effects to this let's add the rough and edges effect to this change the edge type to spiky and I'm gonna animate the border on this so let's go to the first keyframe uh, sorry the first frame and add a keyframe to this and change the border to 62 and let's go to five seconds and maybe seven frames and change the border to 420 also for this if you press U to see these keyframes these will also be changed to easy ease keyframes and go to the graph editor change this do the same thing with these and there you go you're done with this now let's add let's make these edges uh, kind of seem like they're radiating from the center let's add the CC radial blur effect on this and change the amount to 28 and change the type to straight zoom I'm gonna sharpen the boundary of this just so we get a little bit of a texture on it rather than smooth gradient transparency which doesn't look very realistic so let's add a sharpen effect to this for the sharpen amount I'm gonna change this to 600 so basically we see the lines that happen between this I can't really explain it I don't know but I need this to not be so blurry so there you go that's your sharpen we need to create multiple copies of the same solid and alter some of the settings so that we get sort of a layered look to the drop let's duplicate this solid now for the lower layer I need this to animate a little bit differently than the earlier one so first thing that I'm gonna do is change the opacity to 37 percent and for the scale if you go to the second keyframe I'm gonna change this to 140 percent so that we see what's going on okay also for the rough and edges effect instead of uh, stopping at five or whatever seconds that is I'm gonna scale this I'm gonna move this second keyframe to maybe 12 seconds so that it animates a little bit slower than the first one and I'm gonna remove the masked feather on this and reset the value to zero. Also, uh, let's change the radial blur on this to 11. Let's duplicate it one more time. And for the lowermost layer, let's change the scale on this to 180%. And the opacity, I'm gonna drop it to 20%. And for this particular layer, I don't really need it to be very sharp, so I'm gonna just delete the sharpen effect on this so basically if you see this we have something like this right now which is cool I, I like that now let's drag the drop shape composition to a new composition and rename this to precomp one now let's give this a fill effect so that uh, we get some color on our drop layer and I'm gonna change this to a bit of a purple color something like that press OK I'm gonna disable the transparency just so we see what's going on here now let's distort this further so we need turbulent displays change the displacement to twist and the amount to a hundred and for the evolution you can just uh, change it to anything you want uh, yeah that's cool now I'm gonna duplicate the layer and the first thing I'm gonna change the evolution 
to any other value than what we had earlier. Also for this layer, I need these edges that you see here to be a little more prominent. So to do that, I'm going to add the bevel alpha effect. And I'm going to change the light intensity to 1. So now we see these uh, lines which are a little more prominent here. These edges being prominent can make the drop look like it's really spreading across the paper. Also, I'm going to change the blend mode on this layer to linear burn. And I'm going to select both the layers and reduce the transparency to 80%. Just so they're not too prominent here. Okay, let's duplicate the upper layer one more time. And for this layer, I'm going to make this purple slightly darker than what we had earlier. I know this looks like crap right now, but once you composite it on a paper background, it'll look much, much better. And of course, you can change the color to anything you want at any point in this process. Okay, let's modify the turbulent displace here. The displacement for this will be turbulent instead of uh, twist. I'm going to remove the bevel alpha on this layer. I don't really need it. Instead, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to this because I need this uppermost layer to be very blurry. But I'm going to animate some of these properties on this layer. So first of all, let's animate the turbulent displace. The amount, let's add a keyframe here and I'm going to change this amount to 56 at the beginning of this timeline. And let's go a few, a second and maybe five frames forward in the timeline. And I'm going to change the amount to 250. Also, I'm going to change the size to 84. And I'm going to, okay, I've already changed the evolution, so that's cool. And for the Gaussian blur, let's go to the first keyframe. Let's go to the first frame again and change the blurriness. Let's keep the blurriness to zero. And maybe one and a half minute, sorry, one and a half second forward in the timeline. I'm going to change this to 187. So we have this uh, soft but still detailed drop that we have here. Now let's compose it with a texture in the background. To do that, let's first create a new composition, 2000 by 2000, and let's call this texture comp. Press OK. And I'm going to add a texture here. Now this is a very generic uh, like canvas sort of a texture that I have. You can just download any texture you want and uh, go ahead with it. It will look pretty cool. And let's create another composition and let's call this main composition. And this will be 1920 by 1080 full HD. Press OK. And drag the texture comp into the main composition. And let's scale this down a little bit so that it uh, kind of coincides with the boundaries of this composition. And let's drag in the pre-comp 1. That is our ink drop here. First thing, let's change the mode to multiply. And let's duplicate this. And for the upper one, I'm going to change the color mode to color burn. And for the lower one, I'm going to change the opacity to 20%. Maybe 15%. Yeah, that's nice. Also, I'm going to add a hue saturation effect. I'm going to slightly reduce the saturation on the upper layer. So let's change the saturation to minus 50. So now we have a cool purple looking ink drop. Let's add another turbulent displace here. The amount on this will be 90 and the size on this will be 3. So that is basically our ink drop right there. Now to make this pop a little bit more, let's add an adjustment layer. Let's change the contrast on this a little bit. So let's add the brightness contrast and change the contrast to 100%. And uh, let's add a sharpen effect. 
and change the sharpen to maybe 50 less maybe 40 if you need to change the shape of this drop you'll have to go to the drop shape composition and uh, alter the mask and you can do it in literally minutes oh by the way there's a tip here now if you notice if I if I'm changing the shape on one of these only the shape for that particular layer is being changed but if you need to change the shape for all the three layers just by altering this one particular shape you can just uh, click M select all your layers and click M and uh, remove the keyframes on the lower two masks and if you all click on this and use this pick whip to select this mask path on the uppermost layer the one that you're going to change and if you do this for both of these if you modify the mask on this uppermost layer you will be able to modify the masks on all the layers in your composition and that way you can change the shape of your drop so that's just an additional tip for this tutorial and that's the end of the tutorial guys please like and share the video and consider subscribing to Kanye's Arts if you'd like to get more updates and tutorials in the future also I upload some early updates and other exclusive stuff on Instagram Facebook and Twitter as well so check those out too you will find links to all of those in the description of this video and if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding the tutorial you can post them in the comments section until the next time Seanak over and out <laughs>